Hello, I'm Roman Gauthier, and I work for AF83, and I, uh, I'm a UC Engine core developer. So I will show what is UC Engine and what kind of thing you can do with it. UC Engine is a publish subscribe server. Clients push events to the server, which has dispatched to other clients. It allows you to build real-time applications, such as collaborative-based services, games, live meetings, or anything else that fits in the event-driven philosophy. But what, what makes UC Engine different from others is its persistence ability, its native persistence. Every event pushed to the server is stored and time-coded, so you can finally search for events. For example, you can specify a temporal frame or a specific type of event to retrieve. This kind of native ability allows you to think of features like replay. UC Engine is built to be developer friendly, so we really try to keep things simple. We have built a REST API on top of an Erlang core, which JSON is a primary exchange format. And as it's HTTP based, it's simple and you have tons of library to play with. So you're not, not tied to a specific language because UC Engine has been designed to be technology agnostic and interoperable. So you can use the language you want to play, to play with it. Most of your code will run server side uh, most of the time. Because uh, for the moment, we have two main libraries, a Ruby one and a JavaScript one, which is uh, uh, focused on the browser interaction. And uh, there is no intermediate between the JavaScript library, your code at run, uh, running uh, client side, and the server, the UC engine server. But sometimes there is some, some things you can do with the browser. Uh, for example, there is a, um, a conversion of PDF to images that you can do with uh, JavaScript API uh, without having a client-side logic. So to add this, you write a daemon client in another language to speak with it. A new engine daemon client is what we call a brick, a process that needs, that needs to be allowed to do a specific things. Okay, uh, starting with a, a classic, the chat example. Let's imagine you want to chat with a friend, but you know, how do you manage to do, to do this with use engine? It should not be more difficult than send an event to your friend, right? And it's exactly how it works with UC Engine. At Let's be clear, you're not so free on to speak with your French neighbor, so you want to translate automatically your sentences to the appropriate language. So write a daemon client, which subscribes to all chat events, ask Google for the translations, and then push new event to your friend. It's simple. Right? Use Engine is built to be generic, as I said. So here you have the behind of the chat protocol. For example, you have messages, uh, events, which uh, use of the chat.message.new events type. But when Use Engine sees the messages, the, the events, the, you don't know what kind of event it is. It, it's just events. 
So it's completely generic. Thus, you can build your own protocol, and it's the true power of use engine because you can build your your own interactive protocol. This can lead to a huge ecosystem. You know how use engine works? A pub sub server, as I said, and you know what it's supposed to do, but what kind of thing you can do with it? For the moment, we have a demonstration available on your site, which is useengine.org, and we show a very subset of what you can do with it. But actually, we want developers to imagine, imagine and find their own usages around real-time application. And by the simplicity and the generosity of use engine, the limitations are certainly only your imaginations. Here is some links to dig further in the ecosystem. Your whole code is on GitHub, and we have a lot of documentation to dig further in the ecosystem of use engine. Use engine is a young project. It is fun and it is free, free as in freedom. And it has been built for developers, you. So contributions are very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> now I have plenty of time for questions. Is there any questions? Yes? I don't get it. Um, uh, the question is how uh, the persistence is done, right? Um, so we have multiple backends, uh, but primarily as we have a Neuron core, uh, we use Nisia and MongoDB have a double backend. You can choose one of them. Yes? So, would this be useful to reproduce some kind of, of propagation of events like the one Google Wave? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, as we have persistence, we can have replay, etc. And uh, we, have, we, we, we really think we are simpler than Google Wave because we are not the federating aspect. But uh, we, we try re really to keep things simple and to start really fast. For example, uh, most of your code is uh, JavaScript. So you can start in really fast with it because we have built an ecosystem of widgets with, which are uh, available on the demonstrations. So you can, put with it, uh, you can put your widget on your site and it works because you can talk directly to the server. Yes? It's a good question because uh, I don't really know about this, but we maybe we, we can start with it uh, 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 later because um, um, the core uh, uh, dispatch the event to the clients, uh, but on the client side, I don't know if you can see if there is uh, event that you are you haven't because this is the core which, which uh, manage this. So maybe it's uh, more complicated than that. Uh, than that. No more questions. Going once, going twice. Thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs>